We're talking about travel photography, and one of America's foremost photographers is our guest. He is Peter Gutman. And Peter, we've asked you to bring to the studio some of your slides that illustrate what you were telling us about just a few minutes ago, and that is the paramount importance of the human being and not, not necessarily the camera. Tell us about some of the slides that, of which you're the most proud. Let's look at them on the monitor, in fact. Okay, well, I started this off with a picture of the human face because I feel very much in travel photography that the human being epitomizes the spirit of travel. And here you see uh, not, a, not a result of poor oral hygiene, but uh, rather uh, the lifelong custom of chewing betel nut that is uh, very common in Southeast Asia. The headdress that the gentleman is wearing uh, is of ikat weaving. So even when you have tight close-ups on a face, you can reflect a lot of the traditions and cultures of a region. Um, I think on the next shot, we see how a, a person is used to give a powerful counterpoint to the landscape and nature. And here you see a silhouette of a woman in a contemplative mode. Um, in silhouettes, I tend to underexpose a bit to bring out that almost surreal blue color emanating Where from... Where was this taken? It's against the background sure. of snow and ice. Uh, believe it or not, that's the continent of Europe, the largest uh, glacial ice field in Europe, <laughs> uh, Brikstal in Norway. I would have thought it was Antarctica. Uh, this shot is the prototypical travel photograph in its uh, vibrant use of colors and uh, strong sense of uh, composition. This is on the uh, San Blas Islands. That's a Kuna Indian with a gold ring in her nose. And those uh, fabrics that you see are molas, which are inverted appliques and very unique uh, to those islands, uh, located off the Atlantic coast of uh, Panama. In this shot, which is of a Clinket longhouse near Ketchikan in Alaska, uh, you see kind of a photograph within a photograph. The woman is framed there. She has a rather amazed look on her face, uh, juxtaposed underneath a petrified look of the clinket carving. In all these photographs, you try to use uh, photography as a means of telling a story. Here is an example of Flashville hmm. photography. This was taken at dawn. Uh, you see the rosy light in the skies over the plains of Giza, and these are camel herders and the flash fill is used to equalize uh, that rosy light in the background. Had I taken that, it would have all been one murky blur at dawn in the morning. You obviously know how to apply your light. Well, this is uh, what would be known as a strobe and burn technique, where you use the flash to light up the dancers, the red dress, and the burn is, is the extra light that accumulates on that Baroque building in the background too far to be illuminated by the flash of the camera. And the long exposure also gives that graceful flow of movement to the dancers. That's in Vienna. This shot is of the uh, Chateau Frontenac in Quebec. Quebec City. Um, this is a long exposure where you can see almost an aurora borealis effect in the sky, the cirrus clouds uh, racing through the sky. And the accumulated light allows uh, the windows to kind of burn with a very mysterious kind of powerful glow. Um, this shot was taken very, very early in the morning at Port Clyde, Maine, which is one of the first places the sun hits uh, in the United States in the morning, and that smoke rising is the sea smoke that occurs when sun hits the ice. This is an example of the kind of shot where one would need to bracket very widely. This shot is of the uh, romantic cliffside town of Positano along the Amalfi coast of Italy. A favorite time of mine to photograph is right, at, right about dusk time where you can see the, uh, the little twinkle, twinkling glows of lights in the building. Mm -hmm. This shot um, is an example of where you would use a polarizing lens to bring out the strength of that uh, red color in the roof, the AIM toothpaste colored uh, color of Bow Lake in the background, and to also make those clouds pop out in the sky in the distance. That's in the Canadian Rockies. This shot was taken on the Altiplano of Bolivia at high altitudes where the women wear bowler hats and uh, she is a shepherd coming at you. I used a telephoto lens to enhance the compositional elements of that picture. This shot, uh, also talking about heights, this was taken from the top of the mizzen mast of the sea cloud. Now, no matter how automatic cameras in the future become, one thing cameras will not automatically do is climb 300 feet up a, a mast to take photograph of uh, this gentleman who does this daily, unraveling the, uh, the cells. And this? This shot, shot was also taken from heights, but a safer height from the observation tower overlooking Inner Harbor in Baltimore, pedal boats uh, down below. I waited to get the right colored boat coming by, a yellow boat, and color is a very important part of uh, color photography uh -huh. in travel. 
Here I tried to utilize uh, Mother Nature's incredible palette of colors, the very vibrant orange-red of the sandstone to be found out in Antelope Canyon in Utah. Um, I chose somebody who wore bluish-green colors to contrast most uh, particularly with that reddish-orange color of the sandstone. Here I chose to illustrate uh, a couple of moods of water. This is whitewater rafters on the Gauley River. And by using a very fast speed, you are essentially freezing the water droplets almost into images of uh, smashed crystal. And that gives a sense of the frenetic um, kinetic energy that is very evident in whitewater rafting. Here, using a slow speed, you get more of a milky and tranquil uh, look of the same element, H2O, as somebody poses in front of this uh, luxurious looking waterfalls. It looks like Hawaii. It's actually taken up in the Finger Lakes region of New if York. If I can interrupt you at this time, sure. you've given me an example of the variety of approaches that nevertheless succeed in travel. Every travel photographer I've ever met mm -hmm. has said that you must concentrate on close-ups, that that's the key to travel photography. You, you, can, you focus in on a tiny little element of the shot. You've done exactly the opposite, and yet what you've done is enthralling. Uh, well, I, I think very often that's one of the major problems that amateur photographers have. That you is that, take too much? Is, is that yet, they don't get close enough to the action. But when you so are, many of your photographs are taken from far away, aren't they? Uh, and yet they succeed. Well, they try to get some of the environmental impact in. This shot here was uh, taken on the tip of Long Island. That's the Montauk Lighthouse. I had a car drive the wrong way uh, up a one-way road so I could get red tail lights instead of white headlights. And uh, I think on this next shot coming up, uh, I, I understand all slideshows have to end with some form of sunset. So here's a silhouette shot of uh, a Japanese Buddhist monk effectively ending another day of his religious prayer by banging a temple gong uh, in the Japan Alps. Peter, where can you be contacted? Where do you maintain your studio? Uh, my studio is located in New York. Um, I can be reached. In at, what borough? Uh, this is uh, Manhattan, Manhattan, the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And your name is in the phone book? My name's in the phone book. Give us your number anyway. Sure. Uh, 212, area code 595-4274.